Hello everybody, I'm Henry Lee. Today I'm going to show you the process of uh, dry mounting and framing a piece of landscape I just did for North American Guqin Association. <laughs> it's a painting with uh, uh, three Guqin masters, the patriarchs of uh, the lineage, the artist lineage. Uh, they are Wu Jing Liu, Guan Ping Hu, and uh, Zha Pu Xi. Uh, anyway, the <coughs> I also uh, inscribe it with uh, a long uh, poet and a, uh, a title, uh, Three Peaks. So the the three masters symbolize in this painting as the three peaks. Uh, <coughs> So this is a gift I'm going to present to the society when we have a gathering. <coughs> so I'm going to mount it uh, with a simple poster frame. Poster frame is very cheap. It's less than $5 I got from a, a local Japanese uh, store called Daiso. Daiso. <coughs> uh, they have, it's a chain store. Uh, if you live in major city, it's very, uh, popular. Uh, <coughs> I just take this uh, inside the insert, uh, the backing paper, maybe you call it, comes with the poster. Uh, it, because it has this, the uh, information of the size. However, I will just use it as a template for so easy uh, measurement. I'm not really good at uh, Measurement. So I just take that sheet off, and uh, so here I have the exact the size of the the inside uh, space of the frame. So the painting is like that. And you can calculate, you know, the whole the total width and total length, and uh, the uh, then uh, the margin and the extra, you know, so I calculate that it's uh, about 250 on each side. <coughs> the whole uh, height is 23. So, um, also I, I calculated this uh, margin, it's about one and a half. I will give a little extra, then we, if, if uh, too large, we can always trim it. Uh, so this is what I do first. I'll cut a, a piece out uh, because from the, just the visual, uh, visually, I know uh, this much space is going to be enough. If you have long painting, you have to use extra, extra silk because the rule of sun is you, you want to keep the silk brocade in the same orientation. So you cannot use um, like uh, strips, horizontal strips, and turn 90 degrees as a vertical strips. So the ver vertical strips must go this way, and the horizontal strip must go this way because the reflect the, the the pattern reflect lights differently when you shift the directions it will be noticed it's a, just a, um, a professional note if you are amateur if you don't care that's that's fine you can cut whichever direction <laughs> it's economical to you <laughs> but anyway let me show you the correct way of doing it so i will just cut a piece off like that i think it's uh, it's at six. Okay. I have to make sure it's aligned correctly. Silk is very easy to move, so make sure it's uh, flat, stretched. Okay. Let me go to the other direction, cut. Make sure it's a square. <coughs> six, six. Yeah, 
if I'm, I, I in doubt, I'll just put it C. <coughs> um, it's very easy to find a mistake because if you cut it, then it's short. So you, bet you, don't, you don't want to trust the numbers. You have to go visually. That's, I'm a visual person. So I just put this paper beside it. No matter how, you know, it, we, we tend to cut at the even numbers. But the, the reality is not even. You can do this. It says the width is 16.53, but I measured it. It's not, it doesn't match that. Uh, OK, trust me. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't bother with the math. I just cut it like this. So it's correct. If you calculate it, you measure it in the end, it will be wrong. So that's just my way of doing this. So this is the width I need. <laughs> it's a, I think it's even in number with the centi uh, centimeters, 42. I don't, uh, I don't have the centimeter ruler with me. It's all in US inch. So it's 16 and a 5, 3 inch. But uh, trust me, it, it's not accurate if you convert that. Uh, doesn't matter. So just to uh, uh, take this off, and then we'll do the horizontal strips. The horizontal strip, the horizontal strip uh, is uh, two and a half. But first of all, I need to cut out. I, I need to trim this extra margin because they're they got rough and like a fuzzy edge here. So I just cut that out. I need a clean cut. Okay, now to make sure it's leveled somehow. But now I, I better use the the uh, grids underneath it because I want to make sure it's. Two and a half, maybe a little bit overlapping with the painting. Uh, <coughs> you could have a supporting strip in between the painting, but I decide to go uh, an easy way without using that. Then I have to consider a little bit overlapping, maybe just uh, one sixteenth or something like that. So two and a half plus one sixteenth, whatever. So this will um, go first onto the backing paper, and painting on top of this is uh, just a little bit overlapping. If there's a gap, you can still cover it with strip. <coughs> I think I already made a mistake. Was that? Oh yeah, that's correct. <laughs> two, two and a half. Two and a half is what I, uh, it will show. So it was a little bit behind the behind the painting, just to the left, a little bit. Okay, make sure it's parallel. So this is the horizontal edge on top of the bottom, right? And then I need two um, verticals. Let me just cut from. Uh, let me just take uh, take this out. Okay, this two. So I just cut this lens. I'll just cut to the height. Okay. This is the extra I have. I have. Can save it to 
Next, how do I, R if something wrong, yeah. this is too, I can use it. So then I have plenty of this uh, space for the strip one, uh, the, the vertical ones. But let me uh, trim it first. This one, you don't have to overlap. It should be the same. Um, let me see. Actually, it could be overlapping with uh, the, the horizontal. It's, anyway, probably... Three. Uh, we don't need 23, I'm sorry, I, I think <coughs> it's another mistake. <coughs> okay, um, see this is how it works. We have, we have uh, the, the horizontal and then the verticals, just this much. So I, I was wrong. 18. So if we add like two uh, extra, a little bit extra with two and uh, two eighths, oh, two, two, this is eight, two, uh, a quarter, yeah. Okay, so the highest actually I need is, is not the entire, one is just like this. So I should use this guy to measure it. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't use uh, numbers, I just do this. So it should be a little bit taller, just about a quarter inch. Like on both sides, it will be just a little bit. So that's, that's it. Higher than the painting. This is extra. And this is extra. That's only useful for a horizontal. Um, yeah, this is probably not a good idea. If but I may I have lots of painting like this size, so it'll be fine. So all this can go uh, with verticals. You can cut all the verticals. You know, if you want this. Uh, and then for future use, maybe it's it's up to you. So better remember the orientation. Uh, the vertical and the horizontal should be uh, oriented the same way on the origin in the original fabric. So you don't want to shift it. Shifting will make the color difference. Okay. This is two, actually, I need only one in it. So <coughs> okay. One and a half plus, plus some. So one plus uh, one eighth, one and a half plus one eighth. Let's just do three quarter. One and three quarter. Okay. This way. This roller blade is a must to have to cut the silk without uh, pouring the strings. You know, it's still sometimes the, the blade got a bump or something. Oh, maybe my position is not good. Okay, just the. Uh, Okay, this is a one vertical, I need another one. Okay, um, I like to start with an even number and then 
inch, quarter, three quarters. Okay. this I think uh, if you turn it 90 degrees you will see the difference so uh, when you store it, it it doesn't matter just be aware of the direction so if you're looking at uh, the two pieces in the same light condition you immediately notice difference right this is correct so they are the same if I shift it 90 degrees one light one dark so that's very uh, easy to tell. <coughs> I just put this away. Okay, here we have uh, four pieces ready. <coughs> That's all I need for the margin. Uh, we don't do the the uh, uh, trimming until we mount this guy. The original pin. So the next thing I'm going to do is to cut the silicone to mount this original painting. The original painting is uh, 18 by 30 and a half or something. The backing paper should be exactly the same or uh, slightly smaller. So it's, it's like uh, you can mark it with a sharp or with a pencil or something. Anyway, let's just mark it. This is a pen. And we will trim it, so we won't need to measure it at this point. Just like that. And I have a little cut, that's fine. It should be okay. And uh, just cut this way. Don't cut the painting, so take this one. If you um, cut it a little larger, it's okay. Um, it's, it's not going to uh, be a thick top, but if, if it's too large, then it might uh, stick on the on the padding too much. You know. So that's why I try to be accurate here. Exactly the same as this, this painting. A little bit smaller because I'm going to trim it. Okay, that's it. So, this is the, the silicone, and we'll do the mounting uh, first on this, like that. And if the painting is, uh, is wrinkled, comes with, uh, with wrinkle, you need to. Uh, iron it with moisture. I'll show you later. And this is the backing paper. The backing paper should be exactly like this. You can use this one if you want. Just you know, maybe use the, the back side of this. But I'm afraid this leather might might show through. Um, I'm not sure. 
to, to be safe, I'll use a, a prof, uh, besides this might be too shiny. So this one has a coarse side, which I use against the silicone film. But some are, um, mas mountain master tell me they can use the smooth side. Also, it's all, all up to up to you. You experiment, okay? So <coughs> I just cut the backing paper according to this uh, this uh, measurement sheet from the from the frame. Just a little bit. <coughs> just cut this one. It's not rocket science. So a hair thing difference doesn't really, you know, I matters. Okay. So this is my backing paper, <coughs> exactly as this uh, inner, uh, I mean the measurement sheet. Okay, so next I'm going to do the mountain. Let me take this away. I just got a new toy, um, a new tool. I don't know if it works or not. It's a silicone mesh. It's a mesh for ironing clothing. Um, so your iron never touches the clothes or the painting. I don't know if that works. Never used it for, for this purpose. Presumably the painting is not um, flat. Sometimes the painting is folded even, you know. Uh, so we, we can iron the, the painting with a little moisture, but not too much, just, you know, but you spray outside the table, okay? Don't spray it on the table. You hold it in the hand and just spray like that vertically. Just a, a little bit, and then I, I just flatten it like this, maybe see if that helps just to and this at least um, help the to protect the painting, you know, without touching it. I'm not sure if this, this texture would hurt. Anyway, it's a silicone mesh. It has uh, air. It, air can go through. I, I can see through. Uh, uh, it's not a silicone uh, plastic, you know. It's, it's just wire, that, like a net. Yeah, it's mesh. Okay. And I think it. it, it Pretty good. My iron is perfect clean, so normally I just do this. It's much more effective. I think we 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 have to do this in the end for this delicate kind of work. You just make sure it's flat. I think this may not work. Um, if you have it, you can try at home. You don't have to get that. That's for closing. Anyway, uh, so 
the pin is uh, is uh, flat, and then uh, I put this backing paper facing up. I mean, not backing paper, the silicone film, the silicone paper facing up. It comes with a release paper, and I will show you what to, to do with that later. So I put this piece behind. Okay. Now I need another sheet of uh, paper to protect protect this. Let's see if this can be used again. I hope it will work. <laughs> this is a new new toy I just got. tool. Okay, I think the advantage of this is at least I can see clearly if it, if it aligns. So let's just start with this. If it doesn't work, I can still uh, work more. And maybe I should use a little higher temperature for wall. Is it because it's not touching the silicone. Oops, I think. Be careful with this. Does that work? Let's just go slow. So all I need is heat to activate the silicone because it's already flattened right, earlier. So it's not wet. It's dry. You can you can spray more moisture. I think I need to do that. The reason is that um, it has little wrinkles. So this stuff doesn't really help. Um, so don't use that. And here is a learning lesson. So when you get these little wrinkles, <coughs> uh, you need to. Spray some water first. So spray some water. Quite a bit of water to relax it. But not dampen. Not dampen it still. It's very fine mist. So just uh, let it relax a little bit. And then I'll use a um, a clean piece of uh, paper. You can use parchment paper or um, silicone release paper that have been used. Let me show you. Here I got some silicone release paper that uh, has been used. So no silicone attached on that. I use this, just like parchment paper. It's very handy. And uh, so just iron. The wrinkles uh, was uh, going this horizontal direction, so my iron pours it 